Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. We are going to get started here very shortly on our Sunday night live stream show. There is no sound as we get set up here for the show, y'all. So just bear with us as we get started around 8.30 p.m. We will be live. So if you're watching live, just bear with us another five minutes or so while we get set up. Make sure to uh, comment where you're watching from. Give the video a like on Facebook, thumbs up on YouTube, and a double tap on Instagram. We are live on Instagram tonight. If you're watching on Instagram, it is going to be a little bit of a weird view since Instagram only lets you uh, stream vertically, and uh, the, the show is obviously kind of horizontally orientated for our YouTube and Facebook viewers. Uh, but if you're watching on YouTube or Instagram, you can go on your phone and get out of the app, go into your browser and go to Instagram.com, sign in on the website, and then it will let you watch the show on Instagram and you'll be able to e uh, easily view it in that way uh, without it being kind of a funky view. Or hop over to Hubbard's Marina on Facebook or YouTube and watch live there. So if you're not watching live, skip forward to where you see the video start. We are going to get started in about five minutes at 8.30 p.m. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Got a great show lined up for you. Some uh, awesome guests tonight. So we'll be right back with you in about five minutes.
All right, guys. Well, we're here. We made it. Thanks for tuning in, y'all, to the live stream show. Tonight, we've got Captain Brian with us in the studio and uh, John Martin here. And uh, we're going to be talking all about that uh, near shore and offshore fishing tips, tricks, and more. And uh, answering your questions. If you're watching on Instagram, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be kind of uh, cropped on you a little bit uh, on the Instagram app. But if you pop over to your phone's browser, get out of the app and go to Instagram.com and log in through their website, you'll be able to watch the live video in vertical orientation or you can hop over to the Hubbard's Marina Facebook or YouTube channels to watch it there, and it won't be so cropped and funky on you. YouTube or uh, Instagram's working on a solution to that, but unfortunately, they don't have it yet. But we have a lot of cool new features to show you tonight. Plus, we have two great guests that uh, are going to be helping me talk a lot about our uh, Red Snapper and Gag Grouper seasons that are coming up. We're excited about that. Yes, we are. Yes, sir. Long, um, hot summer. Very fishy summer ahead. I got quite a few gags and Red Snapper that uh, I released over the last few months. And I tell everyone I'm I'm going to meet you again after June. So that's the hope. <laughs> coming See back for them. Yeah, <laughs> coming back soon. for them. <laughs> All right, so, well, we want to get right into it, guys, and show you what we've been uh, seeing on the water, what we've been catching inshore, nearshore, and offshore. Uh, but let's start off by showing you those inshore photos and what we've been seeing inshore around the docks and bridge and stuff like that. The flounder bite is uh, still kind of picky. Uh, a lot of them have moved near shore to start their spawn around those sandy patches around those artificial wrecks. A lot of times our biggest uh, flounder that we catch or encounter are oftentimes kind of off the side of one of those small pieces of bottom that we happen to be anchor fishing on and the boat's swinging. Swing a little bit off the rock and catch you a big flounder this time of year. Yeah, shallow. Yeah. Where the, look on your chart, that line of artificials right up and down through there. Mm -hmm. a, whole, a bunch of them right off the side. And right now is a good time for that depth. Yeah. Temperature's just right for them. I know a lot of guys. Catch, oh, yeah. Catching. 30, 40, 50 foot of water. 30. 30. 28. Yeah. But we we had a couple of nice ones. Not huge, but fishing 40 feet. But I yeah. imagine the bigger ones are laying up in that little bit warmer water. Yeah. Some shallower water. And I know mud minnows is a big secret weapon for those big flounder near shore. Right. Those mud minnows or creek chubs, those little snook-looking minnows with the vertical lines on them. And uh, a kid fishing on the dock yesterday must have had a three-and-a-half-foot I mean, monster, monster flounder. It had to be close to, like, 32, 34 really? inches. Yeah. I'll bet there's more there that get targeted. Everybody wants yeah. to target the snook or the redfish yep. or maybe the mangoes. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some flounder in the sand, probably inside every pass yeah. up and down the beach right now. I know Blinds Pass growing up uh, had a ton of flounder in there along that sandbar, and that sandbar is even bigger now. So great time to get out there and try to get some of them flounder as they move uh, in and out of those passes for their near shore spawn. Uh, but moving on, let's see what else we got here. The mangrove snapper, as Captain Brian alluded to, are definitely getting thicker inside the bay and around those rocky points and uh, rock piles of Tampa Bay. Bridges as well and dock lines, a lot of flound or a lot of mangrove snapper, excuse me. That's a pretty one. Yeah. And the Pompano. Pompano are moving along the beach pretty darn well. My son loves digging holes at the beach, so I've been going to the beach a lot on my days off uh, with my wife and son. And uh it was I think this what's today? Sunday. So it was Wednesday we were out there and it was super clear water and twice I saw probably a half dozen pompano moving together in that little trough and it was killing me. It's killing There's a me. couple of our regulars on the overnighter that are out there catching them every day and have yeah. been for a month. Yeah, yeah, the pompano bite is thick right now. We're also seeing the redfish action going pretty well. This one was from John's Pass. A lot of redfish around the pass in the early morning and around those bridge lights in the wee hours of the morning. They're catching them around those mangrove shorelines. During the day, the dock, they've been killing the them shade, out there. Yeah, a lot of redfish. Yeah, the uh, younger kids were fishing from uh, all that sand we have stacked up behind us, <laughs> yeah. and uh, they were stroking the redfish from the beach today. 
Uh, not so many fish in the actual dock. They were actually doing better. You can't better. land them from the dock because they get entangled. But if you're fishing the yeah. beach toward the dock, mm-hmm. you're pulling them away from the dock and you'll land more fish. Now, you're Stay gonna off ha- the dock. You're going to have to. <laughs> if it keeps going like I saw the other day, you're going to have to open a sandbar bar. Oh, right there. Uh, when I left work today, it was getting packed out there on that little spit of sand. And I got a phone call about 6.30. Uh, from the office, someone had set up a plastic table and four or five big speakers and had a DJ, uh, like, mixing table set up on the beach it's, behind our office. It's not so, a public beach. It's not. You can get away with anything out I there, guess. apparently. <laughs> Welcome to the free state of Florida. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. Welcome <laughs> to the beach inside John's Pass. It's not supposed to be a beach. It's yeah, not I a <laughs> public beach. Yeah. It's not even supposed to be a beach. No, and it has no trespassing signs all over it. And the, I, th- I think it attracts more people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the snook bite is also going well. They're we catching a few of them around the docks, and a lot of them moving out onto the beach in the early parts of the morning around those dock lines, uh, bridges at night. The guys fishing John's Pass Bridge around the dock lights and bridge lights have been doing well. And... Uh, Real good time for the snook. They're definitely very active as they move out there to the beaches and passes for their summertime spawn. And triple tail. Triple tail are starting to get thick. Have you been seeing a lot of them as you run out and run back? That's one fish I don't pay a lot of attention to, but I know I see a lot of guys posting online that yeah, chasing big ones. On anything that's floating two or three miles off the beach, you better slow down and check it out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and they're good floating in the frying pan. I know that. Oh, they are very good. <laughs> I can tell you that. Preach it. <laughs> big and fillets off of those big fish. Yeah, they're, nice they're thick, man. They're meat. heavy. Yeah. Yeah, and they uh, they stack up around the markers in Tampa Bay. A lot of guys target them around the markers. Sure. Small little egg sinker. Just what uh, Luke has set up here. You can see the egg sinker sticking out of his mouth. Uh, probably a knocker style rig. Uh, like a knocker rig with a small weight. It might be a soft plastic he has there. Yeah, it looks like he caught that one on a soft plastic jig uh, with a weighted jig head. But a lot of the guys I was talking to actually will take charter clients out there and r- super light knocker rig, a live shrimp down the side of one of those markers sure. in Tampa Bay and tear up the triple tail this time of year. So, But I like looking for them on floating debris while I'm heading offshore. Most of the time I'm fishing (laughs) offshore. Yeah. So anything that floats is a target. Were you on that 63-hour trip with my father and you guys found that big old thing? It was a big, like a ship's fender. Yeah. Big. And it was floating right over there. And we're like, we turned over towards it and it was just loaded with mahi. There there had to be six or seven different species hanging out on that. And we tried to sneak up to it and get the guys out on the front. Throwing mm-hmm. pitch baits and landed a few mahi. We sh- we could have taken a little longer. We approached it a little fast and a little close. We should have yeah. backed off maybe. Yeah. But we don't do it a lot. You know, yeah. Next time. The next time. <laughs> next time we but know. One time we, we drove across a, like a cypress tree. It was a real widow maker. I mean, like 100 foot tree. Oh my God. Floating out there 65 miles off the beach, you know, wow. dangerous and had just a ton of triple tails. Wow. I know that black uh, ship's uh, fender that you ran across had a ton of ships or a ton of triple tail on it because as uh, we moved away from it, that was the trip where we had all those camera guys on there. Right. And we have underwater footage of the bottom of that thing, and there's probably 50 triple tail underneath it. It was crazy. They were all really small, though, which is ironic. All the big ones seem to be in Tampa Bay. <laughs> and 100 miles from shore in the middle of nowhere are all the 8 to 10 inch triple tails. That fender was a nursery. Yeah, apparently. Apparently, that Maybe, was well, unique. it was closer to shore, and the eggs got laid on the barnacles that are growing on it or yeah. something, you know, and it carried it offshore. Who knows? That was an interesting one, for sure. But those triple tail are big, prehistoric-looking fish. The They're, biggest I've ever seen yeah. in the last year or two. Mm-hmm. Strong fishery right yeah. there. Yeah. 
And they are ugly, but they taste so good. Yeah, I just remember one time coming up on a boat that was flipped over out there when I think Garrett was captain at the time. He had me go up there, and I was trying to look and see if there was any bodies <laughs> on the boat, and people are throwing at it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, sorry about your luck, but there might be a triple tail down there. And I'm going like, hey, we're trying to see if there's survivors here. You know? <laughs> Turned People out People are a, standing behind you throwing lures. Yeah, they were. Oh, yeah. And I'm, Will, and I'm Will out. was one of them, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your luck, man. I got to get a mahi mahi, man. <laughs> well, this is the time of year to have those mahi mahi rigs ready, but generally, yeah, we're going to be running deeper after the man or after the red snappers. Yeah, and the big gags. There was a school around the, the boat. The water's warm right now. The mahi are probably. Up there was before. a there was yeah. a school of you know kind of mid small ones on the last trip. We caught some chickens. We caught three or four yeah, we had there. a handful in the box. Yeah, yeah, they saw some on the all day trip too. Definitely starting. But to the see hardest thing is to convince people to it's, leave one in the water so until oh, we get another. Yeah. One. Okay, it's it like, better, I'm getting mine in the <laughs> box. I'm mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, the trout fishing has been real good lately too. Around those dock lines at night, around the bridge and uh, uh, dock lights around uh, like Don's dock, our dock, uh, John's pass bridge. They have just been thick. The trout and even some tarpon starting to show up too. So real good action there during the day. Uh, in the early morning, there's a lot of guys out there on the beach catching a lot of those speckled trout too. And keep in mind, June first. Trout, redfish, and snook, you can once again keep and harvest those species. But their original regulations will apply. So snook season is closed in June. So June 1st, trout and redfish open. But snook won't open until their normal season opens this fall. So keep that in mind, y'all. Um, but with that, we are done inshore. Let's work our way near shore and offshore. John and Brian already kind of alluded to one of those tenants, which is the Mahi Mahi. They're, they're here, and uh, like you said, the water's warming up, and uh, we caught a bunch of them on the 10-hour trip the other day. Uh, and I know on the last 39-hour trip, uh, we ran across them. Yep. And I think the 12-hour extreme uh, has seen them too. So it's definitely getting right. Go get them right now, yeah. And they're typically pretty consistent through the summer. They are. Mm -hmm. We catch more in June and July. Yeah. August, it starts, the water's getting real hot. Yeah. You know, they get a little tougher to catch. Light tackle is king in August. But right now is a good time to get them. And, yeah. I, and I'm sure the extreme, they're in and out. Yeah. Have a better chance of getting them than we do. Yeah, you never know. You never know when that little never school know. is going to show up. But, John. And they look good in the frying pan, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style. Yes, they do. <laughs> mahi Mahi is one of my favorite, but smoked Mahi Mahi is even better. Mahi Mahi fish bread is awesome. But uh, you hit uh, an important point about uh, keeping one in the water. You want to explain that a little bit to our, our viewers? Yeah, it kind of goes against your normal feeling when you're out there fishing because you catch a fish, you want to get him in the boat. They say, get him over the rail. But with mahi-mahi, I don't know exactly why, but if you keep one in the water, they will keep hitting bait. So what you got to do is you got to hook. You have to have the patience and the discipline to hook one up, let it sit there, let the second guy hook one, then you bring yours in and just keep doing that, and you'll catch the entire school if you do that. If you don't, you'll have 20 out there and you'll get three of them. Yep. Yeah, where you could have had 17 of yeah. the 20. And but it's hard to get people to do that. you got to be fishing with a partner, and you both got to be disciplined. Yeah. you got to be disciplined, and you got to have good teamwork. So often on uh, fishing trips, it can really sometimes become all about me, but that's not the case. I, I always jokingly say on party boat trips and multi-passenger charter boats, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And one guy who is all about himself or one gal – and they're not paying attention to anybody else, and they don't have any regard for anybody else fishing around them, can really ruin the trip for almost the whole side of the boat. Uh, so it's so important to work together, talk to the crew, and listen to the people, uh, crew, That's captains, who are trying right to there. help you out and give you that feedback because we're all here to have a good time and catch the most amount of fish possible. Is that what? Go ahead, Brian. No, you go ahead. No, I was going to say, what you just <laughs> said, Captain, is exactly right because a lot of people ask me, well, how did you learn to do this and that and everything else? And I tell people, the very first time I came fishing on Hubbard's boat, you had the old Belmar. 
Mm-hmm. The the uh, the Florida was being built at the time, yep. and I was all the way up on the bow, and I fished the entire trip with a chicken rig. And I was a chicken rig fisherman, and we but, see that a lot. He was yeah, that guy. The I was newbies. that guy. A lot of newbies. I was that guy. They think and, they fell in. One and day. I started listening to the people who were more successful than me, and I started watching them. And finally, I got to be friends with old Ray Mack, and Ray Mack kind of showed me. Pretty the much the ropes of the foundation of everything that I do, but you got to listen to people, yeah. and if if you don't, um, you're never you're going to slow your progress down at, for sure. And that's what my grandfather always said, and my father has reiterated to me is uh, he would very sternly, I don't know if it was jokingly, it was before my time, but he would <laughs> always say, "You have uh, one mouth and two ears." For, for a reason, shut up and listen. Yeah. And uh, that's what he always used to preach to my father. And my father jokingly said to me, but it's true, uh, especially on a party boat. If you just shut up and listen to what people got to say, sometimes they want to tell you everything they know about fishing and, and, and you'll pick up those little pieces and uh, those, those gem times where you get someone like uh, Ed Summerall or, or John Martin or, uh, Captain Brian, I love trying to get Captain Brian talking. It's uh, pretty easy sometimes, but <laughs> but you can definitely learn a lot if you take the time and just sit there and listen. So it's that's why, in my opinion, one of the reasons I love party boat fishing because you meet the different people, you get to have camaraderie with a wide range of uh, kind of. Uh, I don't know how you would word that, but uh, the whole spectrum. And uh, you you learn different things from different areas because everybody fishes a little differently. And that's one well, great thing about fishing. Everybody's got a little bit different personality. Yeah. You know, and some guys are more aggressive than yeah. other guys are more laid back. Yeah. But I think when you're party boat fishing, anywhere you are, up and down the coast, all the way to New York, use the tackle that the crew supplies if you don't know. Yeah. Because... We'd like nothing better. I expect you to make me look good. I want you to catch just as many fish as you can, and our tackle works. Mm -hmm. A lot of people I know, they spend a bunch of money on leaders and leads and beads and everything else, you know, and and then when you're on a party boat, those are the ones that tend to get tangled up more, you know. Those unique rigs that don't match anything else. And I'm sure the guys in New York are using something different than we're using, but if I jumped on a boat anywhere... I would use whatever tackle Watch what they're that, the, doing. that the boat supplies because they want you to catch the fish. Yeah. But there's always going to be that person that comes with some kind of rig, and you're thinking, at the tackle shop, they're saying, you know, I bet we could sell that to that dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like it. You see these, like, rig. chain trick chicken rigs made yeah. out of chain. I'm like, what do you expect to catch out of that? <laughs> but I always try to do, I tell people all the time, Brian will tell you this, they'll say something about like, man, how'd you know that mango was down there or whatever, because during the day especially. And I tell them all the time, I listen to the captain. <laughs> the captain told me what to do here, you know. Yeah. So I listen to the captain all the time. If we caught him there before, there's a good chance we'll catch him there again. <laughs> but I was like, just a few trips back, you said this is a good spot for uh, big mangoes and scamps. I put a big pinfish down there, boom, got about a eight pound, seven or eight pound mango. Next bait down, boom, 12 pound scan. Yes, sir. Everybody's like, how'd you do that? I said, I listened to what the captain told me. Because we caught him there before. He told me that's what was there. My computer's labeled. I yeah. know what I caught there. It's probably when I caught it. I, I am definitely very <laughs> envious of Brian's layout in his computer. I'm pretty sure he has almost the entire central eastern Gulf of Mexico mapped. From every contour rock pile, yes, yes, it's incredible the amount of marks he has. And he knows uh, where Jimmy Hoff is buried. I think oh, he's yeah. got that. He's oh, got it. He's got it all. One of his marks. A lot of a lot of other stuff buried too. We won't talk about. But <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into our first trip giveaway of the night. We are going to give away a five-hour half day for two guests. That right. is a yeah, yeah. That's a hundred and thirty-dollar value, absolutely free for watching the show. Remember, in order to win these free trips, you do have to comment one time on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. So right now, you have to go to Facebook 
dot com search over to hubbard's marina's facebook page comment one time on the live video you're entered to win one of these free trips and uh, all you have to do is comment once you can go back to youtube or instagram and watch there and then uh you're set to win and if you do get picked as one of those lucky winners you have to text that phone number over there in front of uh the I don't know, bottom right corner, whatever it is on your screen, you see the phone number. Text your full home address to that phone number within about five minutes to claim that free trip. And remember, again, as a reminder, if you're watching on Instagram, it's kind of cropped out, kind of a funky view. You can pop over to Facebook or YouTube to watch it in normal view, or you can go to Instagram.com through the browser in your phone outside the Instagram app, and it should appear normal. With that, let's see who won our five-hour app. Two guests. The winner is Richard Bedwell. Richard Bedwell, congratulations on that five-hour half day for two guests. Again, a $130 value. Make sure to text that phone number there in front of John uh, to claim that free fishing trip for two guests, five-hour half day. We are still giving away our 10-hour all day for two. We've got our 39-hour trip for one guest to give away two. So still plenty of trips to give away, and we still got to answer a bunch of questions for y'all too. So let's get into our announcements there, Josh. What do I got written down? Uh, the weather. The weather for this week is as good as it gets. It is. After it, there it's is been, no weather. <laughs> it's been blowing for a week, and it's been challenging. Oh, beyond. Blowing solid for at least a week. Now it's backing down. I saw heard a rumor that... It's going to now get hot. We're going to have oh. a big dome of hot. It's not a rumor. It is not, <laughs> not uh, a rumor. The The spring is, I think, spring officially is coming have to sprung. an end. Yeah. It's going to be summer. Yeah, yeah. The hurricane season is officially starting here. We've got the, the summertime afternoon uh, storms starting up this we're week. We're hoping. We're hoping we yeah. need the water. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely this high pressure has caused this strong east wind. And really stagnated our atmosphere, and now we're going to have a dome of dry, hot air on the backside of this high pressure, and it's going to be nice and moderate good winds. Good fishing weather. Good well, so fishing As long as the fish, people always ask me about the weather, I said, all I care about is where the fish bite. <laughs> and people ask me all the time about June <laughs> and July. I'm like, yeah, Red Snapper's open, but it's brutally hot and it's like come on there's plenty of other times of the year it's where it's cooler nice cooler offshore you missed all of march april and may when it was beautiful and nobody was on the it's boat it's cooler <laughs> offshore that water only gets to be 85 degrees that concrete's 140 yes and right now it's beautiful in the mornings it's almost got a chill in the air it gets to like oh, 82 it is, degrees it's good working weather right oh, yeah. now it is nice hate it's to give gorgeous. it gorgeous and uh, I'm definitely gonna miss those uh, chill, the kind of that chill in the air in the morning. You're gonna wake up next week, and it's gonna be 80. Yeah. When you get up, you yeah. wait, you walk out. <laughs> Maybe I can start swimming like, in my swimming pool. You're gonna be in Hawthorne. It's warmer up there oh, than it, it is down on human. the beach. We get a sea breeze. Oh yeah. We get a break being right on the beach, but inland, man, you guys are toast. Where yeah. I live, it's people ask me about the humidity. I tell them it's like one of those old lead aprons they used to do at the dentist office. They put it on you. Yeah. That's what it feels like. That's what it feels like when you walk outside in the morning. It like <laughs> hits you right in the chest. Boom. It's like, oh, that's hard to <laughs> yeah. breathe. But, hey, it's, it's a good time of year. A lot of people in town, the Red Snapper, are open. And, uh, I mean, we got a lot to talk about tonight, Red Snapper-wise. And gag groupers. Gag a lot of you guys been throwing back gags for months. I know you're tired of it. Ga Brian, you're <laughs> killing me, man. Last time you were on the show, you were talking about gags in the summertime. I always talk about gags biting best in months ending in ER, like November, Near shore. October, November, December. Near shore, I'm saying within 12 or 14 miles up to the beach, any month that ends with R, historically, because yeah. the water gets cooler. Except for September. And they're right up on the beach. October, November, December. Awesome for but near even, shore gags. Right now, offshore, under those red snapper, there's some big ones. Big, there's some big ones, but I feel like the, the concentrations, the crazy 30, 40, 50, 60 head trips are always in October, November, December. Granted, in the summertime, June, July... We see we those, fish the deeper water. Yeah. We get the bigger fish. Yeah, we see those 
I mean, I think one year Ed caught a 41 pound gag. I know we had one year. I got a 42 last year. Yes, you got a 42 pounder. 42. I got a 30, a 32, a 35, and a 42 last season. Plus, we get some big ins. But in November, before the season closes, our charter boats kill it. Yeah. 14 miles off the beach. They're they're losing more than they're bringing home, but they're bringing home gags every day. (laughs) But a lot of times, even in October, November, December, really Thanksgiving to uh, the New Year, uh, is those trips that I see on the on almost all the boats that we are catching double digits, solid double digits of gags. Where in the summertime you get some big ins, but you don't really catch the double digit gags. If we fish the wrong spot in March, we throw back a hundred head of gags. And That's you true. don't want to catch true. them when you can't keep them. And when they're spawning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, I don't want to be up in here in March, man. Yeah. And there's yeah. always some of them homesteaders though. Yeah. There's some that sometimes some of the biggest gags I've caught. John's been. good at catching the big fish. I used to say it was Ed you know, Ed's about to retire. Probably he's been kicking ass for a long time. <laughs> John catches a big fish. Watch him. See what he does. He's probably cheating. Catches, <laughs> catches cheating. big fish. How does he catch big fish? Big baits. Patience. And big tackle and big patience. Patience. Patience is, is part of it. A little bit of skill. <laughs> it's like the guys that fish with the jig heads when we're mango fishing, Yeah, they always get the big fish. Yeah. But you have to have patience because that lead is just a little piece of an ounce and yep. it's sinking slow and you're paling out line. line. And, and the you guy can next catch... to you is landing another one, you yep. know, and you're like, and then you got the big one. Yeah. The you, patience. And you also got to be ready to crank it in when it happens. Because fighting gags are like, in my <laughs> opinion, kind of like going into battle. I you never to... see John Martin fighting a gag. <laughs> he says, I he just got him on guide the leash him. And he just sort of leading him. I over lead him where like I want him to go. And come on over <laughs> come here. Come on over here, boy. Brian's going off camera. <laughs> <laughs> never see him. Come on over here, have, boy. I don't think I've ever seen him fight a fish. <laughs> I use the gear. <laughs> you use the gear? What do you mean? The well, rail? Well, no, the, so many people will take, and they, first of all, the only way, now this sounds real obvious, but the only way to get any fish up, especially a gag, is you got to turn that little handle on the side. <laughs> is that you how it works? You can't be in 120 feet of water and think you're going to cane pole them, or you've been watching those old tuna videos where they're just throwing them on. But I see so many people just You need to get his it. head up. you got to get, get his head you gotta up. you got to get... 10 cranks or so, 10 feet of line as fast as you can. 100. Well, no, I'm just saying, (laughs) what I do, and and once you get them up, and this is what Brian's talking about too, especially bigger fish, you don't want to sit there and be doing like this, man. Doing like this, doing like this. Use your gear. Let the gear take. But the way I do it, if it's a really big fish and and I can feel him trying to get to the bottom, I will punch him. And what I call punching him is like this. I'll go... I'll push the rod down and punch at the same yeah. time. So I'm forcing some yeah. line. Because sometimes you can't turn it, but if you'll punch it and, and turn. And you're setting that, that hook the same a little time, bit deeper. And then Every once I get them up, pop I just crank them. And that's that's exactly the point with that. Is wh- What I was saying is it's like going to battle. You have to be prepared mentally Absolutely. and physically and have the right weapon of rod and reel to make sure you're prepared for success in battle. And when you get that lucky bite after you've been patient, you've had the right uh, bait, you've had the uh, correct recipe for success, and uh, you have a great captain put you on some big fish. Uh, you have to be able to not only get those 10, get those 15, 10 cranks as in. many cranks as you yeah. can. When you feel that bite, you just crank as fast and hard as you can. And then that's when, once you stop, you can't crank anymore. That's when you lift up. And I, I, I uh, call it uh, the grouper dance after uh, Josh Foster. You remember him? Yeah. Yeah, the, the old general manager of the marina when I was younger. Uh, he did, uh, he was famous for it. He would go up there and he'd, he'd be doing this number and it's you lift up real quick and then you ch- yeah, reel down. I call it it's, punching. But yeah. don't short, give him short any pumps. slack. Yeah. The, no, no, no you slack. Gotta you get lower some it before you start reeling. Now you're giving yeah, it, that fish the opportunity to get away. You, you gotta, gotta be turning you the gotta handle be turning on it all as time. you lower it and then stop and then turn it yeah. as you lower it. But you mentioned something about patience. Here's the thing too. 
in red snapper season, first of all, I don't ever – people ask me what pound test line. I don't go below 60 during gag season. Basically. Whenever gags are open. I never go below 60. You catch a lot of mangoes with 60. You, you can. And I'd rather miss one or two mangoes and, and have a shot at that gag. And, and yeah. this time of year, I'm still using 40. But that's yeah. what you're saying comes back into the, the, the Josh Foster era when a lot of things were changing offshore because that time – what was it, 10, 15 years ago, was the time when the double snell came onto the scene when people started fishing 40-pound tests on an overnighter. I remember the first Never trip. Never when I first started. Yeah, I remember one of the first trips that I came out there uh, when I was real young. We were using heavy-duty tackle, and then as I started to learn about fishing and thought I knew what I was doing, I started to look into other things, and all of a sudden this light tackle, double snow rig thing started coming onto the scene, and I remember my first trip out with 40-pound test, uh, Cat Matt came up behind me and yanked on my reel and uh, <laughs> backlashed the whole thing and then cut all the line. I he said, you that. take that 40-pound, throw it in the trash, and go get you some 60, son. <laughs> I teach people all the time. I see them out there. I said, man, that's a nice pinfish rig. You yeah. remember when the double snow showed up, and now this... Jig head is show, this yeah. jig fishing is showing up. Slow pitch oh, yeah. jig fishing. I'm, you see a lot it. more people all the time, and you know what? They produce it great works. success. Yeah, no question. Yeah. But as not to cut John off, but I just wanted to point out that 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 light tackle mentality really became kind of a thing in the last ten to fifteen years, and it's important to have that in your toolbox certain times of the year when the bite slows down or certain times of the day if the bites slow down or picky. Shallower water with the lighter tackle. Too. Yeah, for the hog fish. Deep, the guy with the light tackle is the one who's trying to use a four-ounce lead because mm-hmm. he's not got any heavy line and he's the one getting tangled up every time, every time. And it really started to come into play in the last 10 to 15 years, in my opinion, as regulations started to get restricted and restricted and gag group are closed why use 60 80 100 pound tests you can lighten up to 40 30 pound tests yeah, because I figure if anything you... that breaks me off i'm not gonna keep anyone anyway. exactly but now that gag group are open and red snapper and they pull hard oh, they exactly break. that's why it's important to not lighten up it's it's the time you of will year. lose the jackpot fish if you're trying to fish 40 during red snapper season you won't even come close yeah and you can catch plenty of mangrove snapper if everybody on the boat's using 60 You'll, you'll have a good shot at him, but that's that's when you run into issues. When everybody on the boat's using 60, one guy drops down 40, he's going to have a more natural presentation. He's probably going to get the bite, and then he's going to break off, and that fish is going to sit down there and grunt and shut the bite off for everybody. The gags will, for sure. I don't yeah. think the snappers no. shut down. The snappers, I don't think, shut down no matter what you do. Not till you done <laughs> caught them all. Or the the, Not the moon biting. phases change or whatever. Yeah, if they're biting, if they're active. There's times when it's funny. I had a 12-hour on the friendly a few years back. And um, we got out there, and I'm parking on my good snapper spot, you know, 140 feet of water and getting one here and one there. And somebody caught a bonita on the way out. I chopped off a piece of bonita and threw it out. Red snapper. Oh, yeah. I whacked that Benita up, and I made sure everybody put Benita on their hook, and we caught our limit yep. on Benita. The next day, they didn't want Benita. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was ready for them. They didn't want it. <laughs> it seems like Benita, small octopus are great secret weapons for the red snapper, but they virtually eat anything. Well, I was, was going to say that, to me, people are always asking me about big fish, and there's that old saying, you know, big bait, big fish. For red snapper seeds, now this takes patience, but it also takes faith because I know that Brian or Garrett, which are the two primary captains that I fish with, they are going to put us over some nice fish. Whether or not they bite or not, who knows, but they're going to. So I will use, during red snapper season, believe it or not, I will use the biggest baits I can find. Big pinfish that I catch myself. Hubbard sometimes has them. But I'll use the biggest bait I can find. And you got, you know, red snapper will hit them. Now they're a little bit finicky. Grouper will smack them. But the thing is, if a red snapper swallows like a hand sized pinfish, he's going to be a big <laughs> He's guy. a big red snapper. And you're only going right. to keep four. You only get to keep four. Two, two per day, person two per day. Two per person per day. And like I say, I got faith that Brian's going to put me over some of those big fish. So I'm just fishing for them all the time. That Now, you may want to sit there and fish for something else. Everybody has a right to do it. But if you're wondering why I win so many jackpots, 
It's because I fish for them. Big baits, big fish. I fish for those fish. And yeah. I will actually look, for instance, and say, okay, that, you know, somebody's got a, uh, a, a an eight or nine pound mango. I probably am not going to be able to beat that. You know, it, it's, it's going to be tough. But the, they only, this time of year, they only got like a five pound red grouper that's barely legal that's right. winning the jackpot. I will start fishing for nothing but red grouper because I know I'm going to catch there's one. There's one bigger than There's five one bigger pounds. than that that's five right. or six pounder down there. And the and opposite. Sometimes there's only one big one on that stop. So, so he does cheat. <laughs> that's yeah, not cheat. How's that cheat? I think he's he tact, he I think tactfully he's... fishes for what he Whatever knows he can win. Whatever jackpot he can yeah. win. Makes sense. Is that cheating or is that's, that's that, is smart. that, is that, that's smart experience, right? poker player. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to play playing five card stud. We're all out here playing slots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do they say? Chance favors the prepared mind. Yes. Yeah, so but yeah. always remember He's counting something. counting cards. Something yeah. your grandpa told me a long time ago. He told me that 20% of the fishermen catch 80% of the fish. They always have and they always will. And another thing, and it applies to fishing. And the best spot on the boat is by the other more experienced anglers, <laughs> wherever they might fish. The but bow, he, stern. He also told me, you can't go broke making a profit. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of sense in that statement. And I use that for fishing too. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, as go, far you yeah. know what I mean, I'm gonna catch that jackpot fish. It yeah. helps pay for my trip. What the heck? And Call for me for me, I, I am a an opposite uh orientation. When I go out there, I like to just catch as many mangrove I snappers like as the I can. Action. Yeah. I'm I, going I'll drop for the down action. a plugged thread fin on lightest possible tackle. Uh, granted this time of year. Probably wouldn't go any lighter than I might go a little lighter than John. I might go to fifty, uh, but I would definitely avoid forty once gags are open. Really, sixty is probably a 60 good idea. Sixty is proper, and you will yeah. catch a lot of mangoes with sixty. Especially with this new technology and the reels, these new uh, high-end, uh, super crazy powerful oh, drag man, reels, six to one yeah. and retrieval. You yeah. know, and you can catch that keeper gag if even on your snapper rod with the right size line uh but, but i would rather drop a, a plugged thread fin and catch 20 mangroves really quickly than be the guy in the back corner paling out the jig head for 10 minutes to catch one seven eight nine pound mangrove i'd rather catch 20 well, of the you're not gonna catch, catch 20 one. while he only catches one. Oh, you want to bet the guy <laughs> i catch i catch my share uh, well i seen your dad do it oh yeah i hate I, taking captain mark fishing man because he'd get up on the bow Everybody fighting over the stern up now. He'll be right up on the bow and smoking a cigar. Have <laughs> fourteen of them. Come on, Cap. I He's up. Last yeah. time we were racing uh, down a bottle and uh, up to our limit of mangroves. <laughs> I won both. <laughs> <laughs> but Love you, you, Dad. <laughs> you mentioned something, and you know I'm more old school, like you said, and I use real basic rods and reels and tie. You know, Bass Pro love you, but you're probably not going to make a lot of money off of me because mm -hmm. I buy hooks, sinkers, and line and use bait. I don't do a lot of fancy stuff. But when you you talk about these like new that. reels, and I'll, I hear people, especially with spinning Ooh. reels, I hear people talking about, and this applies to gags especially. They talk about, oh, this uh, this uh, spinning reel I got's got thirty five pounds of drag, and I ask them, but how much lift does it have? Because you know what I mean, you can drag oh. a gag oh, Josh. all the way down, Josh. but if you're not lifting him. You're just dragging him into the rocks. Right. I've got a great video. I I had this last week for last week's show, and uh, it, it's in last week's live show folder, Josh. So I had this queued up for last week's live show, but we had uh, Mike, the weather guy, on the sh on the show, so I couldn't play it. Uh, so, Josh, if you can, just let this play in the background while J uh, uh, John continues with his uh, discussion. I'm sorry to cut you off. John. No, that's fine. But this perfectly outlines why spinning reels are terrible for bottom fishing. This was last trip. Captain Brian put the guys over some big amberjack at the end of the trip, and they caught a lot of nice fish. They lost a lot of nice fish, too. And one gentleman fishing with his son, doesn't go fishing a, a, a lot. Him and his son went out there on this 39-hour trip and were so pumped. They had a nice stringer of a couple mangroves, a couple porgies, a couple uh, vermilions. I think they had a yellowtail and a keeper red grouper. But they had one monster amberjack. He hooked it, and he caught it because he was using a big reel with a big rod, and he was able to fight that fish 
how you're supposed to with leverage, using your body, use the rail if you have to. He did stick it into his gut, which isn't necessarily recommended. You want to keep it up underneath your arm so you have more leverage. This is the what I'm talking about right here. Oh, we're not sharing it yet. Hang on one second. We're going to show you. So normally you'd want to keep it up underneath your elbow. And this is going to be important when we talk about gag grouper. Well, he's got it on the rail. That's a heavy got, fish, yeah. but he knows he's got heavy tackle on there, probably yeah. a big hook. Big hook, big rod, big tackle. He had big patience. He had a big bait on, and he's got it rested on the rail. He's got the leverage. He's using his body to fight the fish, not one arm. I would have it underneath my right arm, my left hand out in front of the reel, my right hand on the reel, and I'd have one knee on the deck using my body rod. weight. That's a heavy yeah. rod. He's got bending right there. And look at what. It, you now don't here's want a spinning rod. what you don't <laughs> want. Uh -huh. So we're gonna we're gonna watch this gentleman back here land this keeper amberjack after a few minutes, and I think he had one line wrapped around his line. You saw the other gentleman trying to fight an uh, amberjack on a spinning rod, and you have to on a spinning rod hold that fish with basically one bicep. And you have no leverage to fight you the gotta fish. You got to hold the end of that reel no. yeah. to try to stop it from spinning. Yeah, no just lift. Taking you it have all. no lift. You have no leverage. You have no options with the spinning. And how rod. long are jacks open? Uh, they're open till the end of May. So this gentleman lands his fish. Like I said, I think he had one or two lines wrapped around his. Look, he's Look still Damien's. fighting. Look at that. Dang. And this yeah. this particular spot. The average weight on those fish was about 30 pounds at least. It, there it were was, some that were like close to 40. This we one a was a jackpot. Four, didn't we? Yeah. This one was one of the jackpots. But he wasn't in the jackpot. He 54. wasn't, but he would have been in the top three, in my opinion, just by the uh, video and the photos. It was a monster fish. And it's, it's the same thing now, guys. All of June and all of July, we're going to be chasing red snapper in the deeper water. You're going to have a chance to land the bigger fish. And it takes a conventional reel and there you heavy look at tackle. that monster. Look at that jack. And do you see any lines wrapped around his? The only <coughs> one that was wrapped around him was Damien, and he reeled up and got out of the way. So no tangles. Josh, play us video number two. And you guys are gonna see the outcome. During this video, you saw the other gentleman hook up with an amber jack on a spinning reel. Yeah. No leverage, no options. You're fighting the fish with and one arm. And you get arm. tangled with seven, eight other guys. Well, people ask me, like, when I'm fishing for amber jacks, what do you, I say, well, I'm using 100, 100. I say, you can't, yeah. you think you can't get an amber jack? I said, you ought to, you have to know that I'm fighting the fish and the other fishermen. And the people, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm fighting them both. And, and that's, know. and that's an important point. Don't get me wrong, a spinning reel will work. One of the biggest amber jacks that has been landed in the history of the company, at least while I've been running the company and in operation, was a hundred and I think it was a 110 pound amber jack. It was caught on 40 pound test on a spinning rod on the surface with a popping lure. But that was on a private fishing charter yeah. with 18 people fishing on the back of the Florida. And they all reeled up Everybody and got out of, the way, out of the way. And it went yeah. around the boat eight times. If that happened on a public trip, no chance. I've of seen guys that fish. that fish run them around the boat three times and, yeah. and still landing, but. It's tough. You're trying to go past well, 40 other people. Yeah. One of the great old timers from back during your granddad's days was a guy named Jim Stevens. Mm -hmm. He's passed away now. Great fisherman. And he used to have a saying that would apply to fishing or the fight to the strongest. But that's the way to bet. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. the way to bet. I mean, <laughs> for me, you, you want to get that fish from point A to point B as quick as possible when you're on a party boat or a multi-passenger charter boat, or really if you're in it to win it, because the quicker you get it from point A to point B, the less chance you have for equipment failures or drag failures or If you're the fishing a pools. rack, the sharks have been thick, they're getting thicker, they're not being targeted commercially yeah. anymore, so... Yeah. The, yeah. If you mess around, then the tax man will get you. Yeah, the longer you take in the water, you more chances you have for a hook pull, a tangle, a bent out hook, a, a whatever it is, a rod breaking, and you losing that fish or getting tangled. Whereas uh, if you get that fish from point A to point B as quick as possible, greater chance of success. But there's a happy medium. Yep. And that's 
it takes some experience maybe to know where it is because you're or it takes to, asking the captain or crew. If you're horsing up a big fish, I always tell people it's like slow down, don't lip his, don't rip his lips off. Yeah, we were talking earlier about how gag group proficients like going to battle and trying to win the war. And when you, the first third of the fight, trying to get that fish up off the bottom and trying to I crank like a madman when you feel that bite and then you short pump them. And once you feel like that fish is off the bottom, you got 20, 30 cranks under your belt. Slow down. You're just trying to keep him on Point the hook the rod and over the, the fish. That fish yeah. will swim a if circle. If he starts diving, give him give him a little bit. Dip that rod. He'll tip. he'll try to dive, or he'll he'll just keep diving. He'll do this circle, and you'll gain a little bit on him, and yeah. then he'll again and another circle. And you're just bringing him closer every time. It's John don't bite him. Yeah, it's John's well, got him on a leash. Saying, "Come on, baby, come on." <laughs> I will even with the lever drags. You can even back off your drag a little bit, and that's a good idea. Once oh, you've got yeah. him. Up off the bottom, it's a good idea because a lot of times with the lever drag, I'm fishing with it and strike with the drag about 75%, 80% of max. And then when I get a big or when I feel the bite, I crank like a madman in high gear. And then if it's a big fish, you slap it into two speed, you slam that drag forward. Now you're in max and low gear. You start putting cranks on that fish. And then once you get them up off the bottom and you won the battle, it's time to win the war. Back to drag off, Absolutely. put it back into two speed, and just take There's her There's so easy. many ways and to lose a fish. that's just playing with your, this new equipment, man. It's like all these options, and we just fish with single speeds. Yeah, I just bag it winch. off. I just give me it's a too winch. many buttons to put. Give me a winch and a 4x4. Four four. I got yeah, it. I, this, the phone is too smart. Give me a me, hammer, right. zip ties, and duct tape. I'll have it fixed in a minute. That's Captain but, Brian's mantra. Brian, I'll never Down forget. Yeah, this was probably about two, maybe three years ago. I remember you were the captain because I, I was fishing uh, real with my mango rod, and I hooked something pretty big and ended up being like almost a 50-pound cobia. I don't know if you remember that. And I came around on the stern. I was on the side, and I had all these lines coming. I had a full Martin. As oh, yeah. Nice like to call full Martin. And I could see the fish out there, and I finally was able to get him in and get him gaff. And you told me you gave me one of the best compliments I've ever had. You said there's probably not – Three people on this boat that could have landed that could have landed, landed that, landed that, that fish with the true. conditions that were there and all. Oh yeah, because I was know. just I, my heart was just pounding. But you would have never and known that fish was dragging eight lines, just like lead. He was just up out, out there. The water. I'm like, oh my god, he's a huge cobia, but I can't get him. So speaking of dragging eight lines, so the gentleman fishing the spinning reel hooked him on the port side or just forward of midships he's all the way on now the starboard on the side of the port uh pulpit and look at all them lines. he's got about he's got eight his... lines wrapped around it now they have to stop fighting the fish to try to clear the lines without well, taking a hook yeah long story short they finally land this fish josh you can stop the video everybody gets the picture <laughs> uh they finally land the fish successfully uh you can actually skip forward to the end so we saw the gentleman with the conventional reel and the fish he landed. Now let's see, the spinning reel tangled up about a dozen people, stopped everybody from fishing, caused a lot of problems. Let's see the fish he caught. And then everybody's tie and tackle. Jason is not the best videographer sometimes. He gets distracted trying to untangle stuff. There it is. So right about... Uh, he took it off. Uh -huh. There it is. That's a, that's a, that's nice a barely thing. legal fish. <laughs> Thirty-four and a half. That's a barely legal fish. So and he, and he fought and it as hard out. as it was a sixty-pounder. Yeah, I mean, literally, the other gentleman with the conventional and reel he cost everybody else that drop. Exactly. The other gentleman with the conventional reel had the leverage, fought that fish with his body, was able to put it on the rail, brought the fish straight up caught. instead of letting the fish go like this and catch half yeah. the boat caught a solid fish that was closer to 40 45 pounds whereas the other gentleman with the spinning rod and reel had probably a little bit more fun on lighter tackle but tangled a dozen people up caught a barely legal fish and caused a lot of issue and he lost fishing time if he was using that bigger conventional reel he could have gotten down and maybe caught maybe a second caught another fish. one you yeah. lot two on that trip yeah yeah so it's just Real important to keep in mind, you're only uh, as strong as your weakest link, and you got to work together to land fish. So real important to use the right tool for the job. Just like if you're, yeah, 
you get it. <laughs> my, my analogy was <laughs> going to go like to left field. That looks like a nice field. tool right there, D. This is, uh, this is, I, I don't like you looking at my tools, but it's, <laughs> it's very, very nice. This is the new Daiwa Saltiga LD50 two-speed we carry in our shop. The new LD50 comes with that salt and pepper shaker handle, so wherever that real handle stops, it's always going to be straight up and down. So you can grab it. And you're always ready to nice reel. Handle. It's yeah. got it's rated. Daiwa rates their reels to strike, so it's rated to 40 pounds in strike. But you got another 25 percent. So this reel easily has 50, 50 55 pounds of drag. Pounds of drag. Sure. And the new LD60, which they didn't have before, now they have a 55 and a 60. The LD60 uh, is rated to 45 pounds of drag and strike. And this is what people get when they appear on the show. This one, <laughs> yeah, we both get one. <laughs> we both get one. <laughs> I, I had to, cost uh, us fish. Yes, it, it, it will cost <laughs> us. Too complicated. We'll right. talk about it after the show. But <laughs> <laughs> that is a definitely a nice, nice reel. This is high end for Daiwa. How the, much is that way? It is. is it's a little heavy, but it's a good, solid piece of equipment. Yeah, it is. Uh, it doesn't say. Kind of like oh, me. Oh, 29.8 ounces. What would you say, Josh? I said kind of like me. <laughs> A little heavy, but a good, good solid. Good solid. Good piece solid of weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a nice reel, and uh, it's crazy the comparison. You almost can't compare it to the original LD50. It's so much more of a solid frame. Really got some cool stuff to it. The ATD drag. It's uh, so I was reading up on it today. The ATD drag is this. Uh, has to do with the enclosed drag system, and it has this special liquid in there which has that lower uh viscous uh solution and then as the drag engages it becomes of more of a solid warms it up yeah so as the drag starts going it's very easy very smooth very light but as the drag starts pooling then all of a sudden it warms up and gets tighter so it's a very smooth drag. You don't have those pools. You'll never have that lobing that'll cause you to lose. They're the not fish. using drag washers anymore. Huh? No, a liquid it's an enclosed drag washer. It's an wow. App, it's fish ain't got much of a chance. No, no, they really don't. I'll tell you what, GPS took care of that. Yeah, yeah. GPS and the uh, new trolling motors they're putting on forty-six foot uh, yeah. center consoles don't help the fish. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, so I know it is Greg Roberts' birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to Greg, Greg Roberts. No, get off. <laughs> <laughs> you are a saint for dealing with uh, Jennifer. And uh, shout out to Sophia and the entire Roberts clan. Thanks for coming out on the all-day trip today. Uh, so let's see here. It is time for our 10-hour trip giveaway. Let's see who won a 10-hour all-day for two guests 10 hour all day for two guests. Let's see who won. The drum roll is playing in our ears. Oh, well, I'm just trying to play. I like it. Can you hear that if I put these on? Yeah, you could. Bonnie Corniak, one of our very, very uh, special guests who comes out fishing with us quite a Quite a bit. Never won a free trip on the show. That's all right, cool. Bonnie. Howdy, Bonnie. Yeah, thanks for watching, Bonnie. And uh, you just won a 10-hour all-day for two guests. Make sure you text that phone number in front of John to claim that free trip. And uh, hope, well, actually, we'll see you Thursday. I know you have a trip. No, wait. Today's Sunday. We'll see you Tuesday. I know you have a trip booked on our next all-day trip. So that's cool. Um, I know. What else did we have on our announcements, Josh? Did I miss something? Weather... Uh, the subscribers, don't forget about our private after show. If you're in the subscribers group after the show, we always do that subscribers only uh, live show, uh, kind of behind the scenes show after the live show ends. If you're on the subscribers page, you can go to our Facebook page. Right at the top of the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, you can join our subscribers group. and You'll get access to that private group page. You'll get some kind of behind-the-scenes content through the week and a little bit better contact with me and some of our team. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. And uh, definitely, if you're a subscriber, don't miss the after show. Because uh, we're going to have more fun stories. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Captain Brian and John for some uh, kind of behind the scenes historical, more colorful photos or <laughs> colorful stories, not photos. I don't want to see your photos. <laughs> and probably they're not in color, right? 
Uh, <laughs> uh, see what I did there? That was quick. That was witty. I give myself credit on that one. All right, Josh, let's see. Do we have some time to answer some uh, questions from the fans? Who's our crew for the 39 hour on Tuesday? Nine out of ten times, your crew is going to be Jason and Will. Uh, and uh, it's most all the time going to be Will. Most of the time going to be Jason. But we are kind of uh, transferring some people in with Jason. We He's have had Splash. Some shoulder. Splash is going to step up. New guy, Splash Michael. Splash yeah, Gordon. Him. They know him as Splash on <laughs> yeah, the live show. Yeah, you've probably show. all seen, seen his, the video. They've seen his video. We're going to show it so. again. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's he's working hard and paying attention. He's gonna jump up and take some of the red snapper trips this season because you know, just with Will and Jason man, they're grinding it out and they need a break and now we got a guy that's capable of stepping up yeah. and doing it. So here he is. Yeah, Michael not only... Splash Gordon. <laughs> they're gonna hey, he's he's on the job. Right. What was that his first week? <laughs> he's gonna show it now. He was just he was queuing it up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, worry, guys. You're going to see the video, So he too. will forevermore be known as Splash, and yeah. no matter how. He's tried a couple times to change his name. but He has tried, but he's going to have to live with it. And he watches the show. Shout yeah. out to Mike. Shout out, Mike. <laughs> he does a great job. He's been a great addition to the team. Hey, super. at least he got it over with early. Yeah. Super hard worker, super smart, really great in the engine room. And not that, scared to go in the water. That reminds me of my old uncle. He used to say that uh, he's writing checks he can't cash. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he went for a stride, little bit of a jump. A little bit of stride there, Mike. He's yeah. a good guy, though. Oh, yeah, yeah he's great. a hard, he's a hard worker. worker. I like, yeah. like working with him. Yeah, we were very blessed to uh, get him on our team. We have such a great Didn't team. Jason, friend of Jason's, right? Jason Porton. See, yeah. look how much of a Jason's got friends? Yeah, and, and they're respectable, good guys. I'm the one that coined the phrase omnipresent Jason, by the way. Now, I've nicknamed him that. John's getting Jason back for all the digs that Jason has gotten in on John. Oh, they, John wasn't on the show. <laughs> yeah, they and they play a lot of tricks on me on that boat, him and Will. Oh, man. they just started talking about that dummy that last year they, they made up. Will made up a dummy. And socks and everything, and they were putting it in pe different people's bunks during the day. A mannequin. Is what a man. Yeah, it was a mannequin. <laughs> he's not and, calling anybody dumb. <laughs> okay, I am not. But they made a mannequin, and we're putting it in strategic people. It was funny as heck. We'd have Will's, to... Will's favorite thing that Will does, though, um, the favorite thing, hands down, is making up the fake names and putting it on the breakfast order sheet for yes, Tammy. Tam so Tammy goes up and down the deck calling Call fake <laughs> Yeah, and she falls for oh it every my time. Gosh. Funniest thing I've ever heard of. Mr. Me off, never mind. <laughs> some happened. of y'all might know that. <laughs> but you won't believe some of the stuff oh, they put in. Oh, he comes up with some good ones. You they put in my of. bait well, him and Jace. They'll put in like my bait bucket or they'll I'll come out there and I'll get ready to put a bait on. I can't even tell you some of the things they have hooked on my hooks. <laughs> but that would have to be the after after show. I think we yeah. put some bait on I'm pretty sure after we show. put some bait on his stringer a few times too. <laughs> So funny. I'm lucky they haven't put it in my bunk. But they have put they did put that dummy in my yeah. bunk. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah, you don't you don't you don't want to follow you don't want to be good friends with Will. <laughs> all, all our public guests, you can rest easy, but you don't want to be good friends you with start Will and doing fall a lot of trips. Early. Join the regulars club. Come nope. on in, get to know us. Yeah, you are fair game. <laughs> <laughs> After a certain amount of trips, you uh, you do become fair game. <laughs> and that's just because we like you. Yes. It's like sleeping with your shoes on. Yes. Yeah, you never want to let your boots out of your sight. I've I've personally uh, done things to Will's boots. <laughs> Let's see the next question, Josh. Is 50-pound braid with the 60-pound top shot good all-around setup for June 13th trip? No. In my opinion, the all-around setup is going to be monofilament. The only time you really want to or really only need braid is when the bite's kind of picky, when we're fishing super deep water, mangrove snapper fishing, light tackle fishing. For red snapper, in my opinion, you don't need braid. They hit and they bite. They swallow it whole. Half the time, the hook is down in their throat uh, because and sixty sixty. If you're gonna use a braid, use a big top, long top shot, and do sixty sixty. Why 
risk yeah. losing the fish. And that's my thing as well, is whenever you do a top shot, people often say that, well, I've got 40-pound braid because I want a lot of line capacity and I want extra sensitivity. We're not but the lazy use, fish. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you use a, a heavier top shot and heavier leader than your main line, where is your weak point? Your main line. Yeah. And if you break on your lane on your main line every time, you're gonna have a really you're using sucky is, trip. It should be set for the fish you're targeting. You want mm-hmm. a lot of line if you're trying to catch a pelagic and you know he's gonna run with it. When you're grouper fishing, most time I just need enough line to reach the bottom. That yeah. that bottom fish is not gonna run more than just a little ways, which a jack will yeah. run, a gag will run, but they're only gonna run 35 or 40 feet and they're gonna rock you down if you let them so use the equipment for the fish that you're targeting exactly and the only reason you would have a lot of line capacity and a lot of braid is if you're vertical jigging if you're flat line fishing bait casting pitch, for pelag- yeah pitch, pitch baiting uh bottom fishing monofilament works with the new rod and reel technology we have with these high speed reels you don't need braid Really, braid is more kind of like class 103. I jokingly say most of what we do is 101. 102 is casting, holding bottom a little bit more while you're further out. Knock a rig fishing with super light leads. Uh, And then 103 is braid fishing on the bottom with a full red snapper trip. If you want to use braid in June, you're going to have to be an extremely experienced angler or you're going to have a very upsetting trip especially if you use heavier top shot than your main line you're really setting yourself up for failure you want to your top shot is an extension of your main line it should equal or be less than your braid backing so if you've got 50 pound braid you man in my opinion you're stuck to 50 pound top shot really Almost 40 pound is better because, right, because if the you break, is so skinny. Yeah, and if you break, you're going to break in your top shot, not your main line. You're not going to have to retie a line to line knot and retie a whole top shot while the bite's going on. You've just lost 20 minutes at well, one of your better spots. Absolutely. People see me, I make a bunch of rigs and I hang them off this rail cushion. And people say all the time, are you, are you think you're going to go through that many rigs? And I say, well, it depends on how you look at it. If you're thinking about that, I'm going to break that many off the bottom. No, but I tell people, I try to keep it simple. The only way you're going to catch fish is on the bottom. Yep. So the more time you can spend on, on the, bottom, the bottom, the more chances you have to catch a fish. So whatever keeps you on the bottom is the best way to go. You're going red snapper fishing. You got 50 people on the boat, it's guys. It's going to be a crowded It boat. is going to be, take patience. And if you're using braid, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I don't like braid. I, but mainly it's because I, it's never really, I've never really used it. old. Because I'm old. I'm old school. I admit that. I'm ACDC, back in black. Man, some people commented on my shirt, by the way. But uh, anyway, but if you're going to get with braid, you're going to end up tangled. And you're going to you end are. up in tangles that cost you time. And time is something you cannot get back on a party And boat, you know man. that braid is hard to untie, let alone if you're tied up with four, three, four, five other really? people. Really? Really the only time, in my opinion, that you should be able or that you should even begin to contemplate switching to braid is if you're using a very high-end rod to where, and you're experienced enough to where you can lift up on the rod, you can feel the lead pick up, you can feel the bait pick up, you know if you're on the bottom, you know if your leader's straight, you know if someone else's line is touching your line. If you can feel the difference between all of those things, you're ready to use braid. If you're not, you're not ready. Stick to mono. And with you'll the produce bull bay, more fish with the mono. It's all produce, I use, and I produce. catch one or two. <laughs> it's all I do. You you want to come home with your limit? Flex. Use the mono, guys. Come on, give us a break. And and all in all honesty, though, you really can catch. Obviously, as John pointed out, he only uses mono, and it works for him. And a lot of people use mono with great success. I like fishing with a braid backing personally and i like fishing braid only when i'm fishing for mangrove snapper 
If I'm fishing for a red snapper, gag grouper, all mono, all the way through the reel, there's no reason to have braid. When a fish is going to take it, bite it, and run, there's no reason to have sensitivity. He's not going to run 400 yards. Yeah. You don't have to worry about. And with these new rods. And look how cheap mono is compared to braid, man. Yeah. Good, guys. Look and when here. you use these new rods, like those bull bay rods we have in our shop, I mean, you can feel a pinfish fart in 200 foot of water and, with and what's, mono. What's the retrieval on this one? Five and a half to one? It's none of your business. <laughs> I, want it. I want that. It is a very nice reel. The retrieval on this is 45 inches with every revolution. <laughs> Holy cow. That's crazy. That's a lot. Man. Yeah, it's four, a... Almost four feet. I'm not a math major, and I know that's a lot. It's a 5.1 to, or 5.8 to 1 high gear ratio, 3 to 1 low gear ratio. Even 3 to 1 is huge. Yeah, you three know, three to 1 is We grew up with low. them 2 to 1 senators, huh, John? Yeah, but I got I got the saltis is what I use mostly, and they're pretty high. You have a saltis? I guess I, I, it's about all I use. I thought you had all pen, four, six, and eight. I don't have any That pins. was 10 years ago. I don't have any pens. So all of my stuff is Every tackle pen. that I've seen you bring on the boat is the, either the Daiwa 400, I, when I say pen, I mean the old school, I got Dallas, classic style, Saltiste original. And, and 400 and a 450, uh, I think, H. So it's eight. all Daiwa yeah. 400, 600 inch. Yeah. Don't, don't touch my reel. I want to see the reel. It's so smooth. It's very addicting. You notice that just probably fight the fish so hard you bend the shaft, it'll never hold a bearing. Yeah, I, I pretty much use Daiwa mainly because I think they get the best bang for your buck and they take a licking and keep on ticking like the old Timexes, but I'm dating myself. Yes. But if you use braid, just understand this. If you use braid on the upcoming snapper trips, you're probably going to hear me say, I can't see that old sewing thread, so <laughs> I'm just going to cut my you line and cut. I'm going to let you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, oh, I, people said somebody asked you got bad eyesight I said no I got 60 year old eyesight oh, that's <laughs> real nice. I, that it's hard to slick. see that braid when it's you're very, to untangle it, it very is hard. and you know your braid pulls tight and you're every, it just gets and, tighter and we're trying to make sure that everybody's fishing but I, if, if you don't get anything else out of anything I'm saying tonight I'm telling you you need to be on the bottom as much as possible and that's, and that's what I harp in the pre-boarding seminar with the de-hooking rigs. If you're trying to go out there on a 39-hour trip with a pair of pliers or, God forbid, nothing to help you unhook a fish, you are putting yourself at an incredible disadvantage. If you get a pair of those Barracuda de-hookers in the office, I'll show you how to use them real quick. You it only will... takes a second to figure them out. One fish and you will know how to do it. And then once you get proficient at it, it's less than a half a second it's a keeper fish you shake it off next to you you are baited up and back down to the bottom within a minute you are maximizing your time on the bottom and it's similar to inshore fishing if you anchor up on on the side of a um, a flat and you're chumming out greenbacks and ca casting out live greenbacks the only people who do that are charter captains who have clients with them uh, who are first timers or less experienced or people who are just trying to catch whatever bites the ex super experienced flats fisherman is going to want to cover the largest amount of area and show his bait to more fish using artificial lures and his trolling motor and it's the same thing out there the the more experienced angler is going to want to get the most amount of bottom time to show his bait to more fish Absolutely. and have the opportunity to catch more quality fish there's times we'll catch 50, 60 fish on a stop, you want your 10. You know, you don't want There's somebody else to catch There's a finite number them. of fish that are going to bite off that spot. And the only way to capitalize on that is making Just sure your bait's in the water. There's the also, and I agree with exactly what Brian said, but especially during gag season, there's also something to be said for just being on the bottom period because I can't tell you how many times there's hardly no fish come up on the spot and I'm sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and bang, I've caught some of my biggest grouper on spots where nothing else came up. And generally it's yep. when I say, all right, guys, let's go, and I fire the motors up and we get that bam. motor bite. It's like, bam, that the vibration of that engine firing and, off. And a lot of more experienced captains like Brian, like Garrett, like Joe, like my father, like all of us, we will oftentimes start the motors before you make before that announcement, you make the announcement to reel up. You might start talking, but 
you don't say, hey, guys, reel them up until after you start the motors. You'd be surprised how many fish you catch right after you fire that motor up. It's and that's crazy. And what's interesting to me is even in 200 foot of water, they respond to that sound on the surface. So when someone yells at you, hey, don't slam those lids or don't let that lead slam against the side of the boat, there's something to that because they can hear. They can hear. Yeah, sharp. Sharp noise. I Sound think, travels three times faster underwater. It's than it aluminum does in the boat too. It's I, I a little think, louder than a. I think flash. one of the the best things of what you can do about fishing is you got to be honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, there's nothing. I know people that go out there mainly just to get away. They sleep. They re, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't think you're going to catch as much fish as someone who, like myself, prepares a lot. You don't know how much preparation I've done before I even set on the foot on the boat. John, and, you've caused me to get two complaints recently, and both of them were related to your live bait. Why do the regulars club members who fish more often get larger baits and more of them? They don't. They don't. They don't <laughs> buy them from us. They, they spend 12 hours before the trip Going out, I was talking to Damien, a lot of you guys who fish with us a lot. He travels all the way from Atlanta, Georgia with some buddies. He will come in the day before a trip. He will buy shrimp. He will peel them, de-head them, de-vein them, and brine them in small pieces to make perfect pinfish bait. Then he will go out there the morning of a trip that leaves at 3 p.m. at at 5, 6 a.m., and he will pinfish for six, seven, eight Ten hours noon. and yeah. fill a live bait well and then bring it to the boat, unload his pinfish onto the boat. And when people look and see him pulling out these big pinfish out of his live well, it's not that we gave him bigger pinfish or we held bigger pinfish for John Martin or Damien. It's the fact that these guys are preparing for their trip in a completely different level they put in than, the extra work. than the average yeah. angler. And... The average angler will typically buy bait from us, which makes it easy. You show up, we have the bait at the dock, we give them to you in a bucket, you load them onto the bucket, and yes, you have to load your own pinfish. Uh, Estelle Wolfman and some people have mistaken that in the past. You have to load your own pinfish on He's those 39-hour like trips. And I will yeah, occasionally She help. is hopefully watching. But uh, the, the trick is with our pinfish, we get orders of 2,000. 3,000, 4,000 pinfish in a day's time. You can't go out there like John Martin or Damien and hook in line one by one 4,000 pinfish and then throw a couple back that weren't big enough to only catch the big ones. You, We have to go out there and set traps. And FWC has regulations but, for the size trap opening we, we can We do have. not sell select Live bait to our select customers. Everybody has the same <laughs> shot of we, buying our and, With and pinfish, bait. with shrimp, it's all the same. We throw them into one well. We pull it out with one net. You might get a couple big ones. You might get a couple small ones. But on the pinfish, only a certain size pinfish can fit through those FWC regulation size trap openings. You will not get a 9-inch pinfish buying them from us unless... You get the select bait, which hopefully this summer our bait guy, Brian, is launching a whole nother side of his business. He's expanding to a couple boats. We've really got a great, great bait guy. Uh, and uh, Brian Harris is way overqualified, super intelligent. He's he's now got hopefully three boats working yeah. with him this summer. And the goal is not only will he have the trap bait, but he'll have a different live bait well for select and bait. He's gonna want so you'll have... be able to compete with old John and Martin he's, here. He's going to have some tournament baits too. Yeah. For you guys, that I like want to everybody enter to the catch. Tournaments. Yeah, come on down and see us, man. We can hook you up with some tournament baits. Yeah, because the thing is, I'm always fishing as hard as I can, and I'm trying to catch as many fish and as big a fish <clears> as I can. But I don't ever ever root against anybody else. I yep. want you to do the same thing. But you mentioned something about Damien, and, and it goes back to you said you had complaints. And it, if you talk to Damien, he will tell you that where he Nicest learned. Nicest guy I've ever met. If, oh, where man. he learned every bit of that from. Where? Because he came to me. He didn't learn being nice from and, you. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. He came to me, and he asked me about the bait fishing. 
Yeah. And I told him exactly what I did. And, and someone, someone <laughs> recently, that's, that's, that's funny you bring this up because the bait fishing thing is now become like a camaraderie thing where Damien, John, uh, a bunch of the guys will go to this one certain area. And I have been asked probably almost a dozen where times in the go? last couple of weeks where they go. <laughs> and even by our supporters page. Which shout out to our supporters page, really appreciate you guys. And I have not let that cat we out of the bag. We wouldn't know, and we wouldn't even ask. I do know exactly where it is, <laughs> well, but yeah, I have someone, not let the cat out of the bag. Didn't come from me. Yeah, but it is it is uh, definitely strategic where you want to be for those bait fish, and it all has to do with clear water, water movement. Bait being present. And I've been studying it for a long time. He has, and I'm not going to give that information up. Uh, but this is a guy you want to talk to. <laughs> I tell people all the time, I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, drive three hours down here. If you want to know, like, for instance, say the Skyway, which is everybody knows about the Skyway, I say, you know, you get up, meet me out there at like 6.30 in the morning, I'll show you everything I do. And I rarely have anybody take me up on. They yep. just want to have the success right. without putting in the without work. Without the effort. And where where in the world does that apply? Uh, at Hubbard's Marina. <laughs> <laughs> you watch the videos, you come down, you buy the live bait, we'll supply it to you, we'll make it easy for it. But you're not going to have those monster baits unless hopefully this summer Brian is able to get those extra staff members. We'll have the select bait available. You're just going to have to pay for that advantage that john has by waking up early so either put in that work ahead of the trip or take advantage of brian harris and our bait uh suppliers but who's cheating now uh, you say, are you're still cheating you're the one getting it for free because you're putting in the work is that cheating is that is that motivation that's prep that's uh that's, that's your own personal beliefs well, still how the, you interpret that the funniest <laughs> thing dylan the funniest story on Red snapper fishing. This was about three or four years ago. Brian was captain. I was actually fishing up on the bow, and I had a really good the trip. The best spot in the boat. And it was like, it was 50 people on there. And this guy literally came up to Brian and, and yelled at him, says, you're, I want to know why you're putting this one guy on all the fish. You're putting that dude right there on all the fish. And Brian, <laughs> nothing makes me more upset than that comment. And he it's had like a lot Brian, more faith Brian, in my ability than yeah, I did. Brian's been fishing in local waters longer than any of us, but he's he's really good. He's the one of the best, but. He cannot put an individual over the fish to make sure no one else on the boat catches him. He sure has some confidence in my ability. Plus, he doesn't like John that much. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whenever I win a jackpot, he runs. It's you don't, just because what you John don't see, tries harder. He, he fishes all the time. What he you don't see, guys. Rusty, but if you're struggling... <laughs> Talk to me. Talk to one of the mates. We'll hook you up, we'll, man. We they'll really try to make sure John fish. doesn't win. Yeah, when you you don't, what you don't see on we'll the video. What you don't see on the video we'll is when I win fish. a jackpot. Brian gives like five last calls. <laughs> <laughs> last call, man, for Half the jackpot. The time he wins Are you sure? Because that? everybody doesn't get in it. Which means you should always or get in. Recently, I mean three three times recently. There were bigger fish on the boat, but John won because he got in it. What's that old saying? Oh, yeah. You got to be in it to win it, baby. You got to be in it. Well, see, I still, I still, it's empty. I but still, I think he would step his game up if you were in it. Yeah, well, I still maintain that they should weigh the fish and the fishermen. Yeah, of course oh. you do. Because it's of a team effort. Do. I could weigh in a pinfish and beat you, John. Yeah, Brian would never win. <laughs> I win every time I'd be I bring careful. everybody I'd be home careful and break with him. the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is <a> dangerous man. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, we do not have time for Thank any more questions. We are out of time. We are 20 minutes over We're time. We're yakking. We're having fun. Yeah, we are. This has been a great show. Uh, keep putting that one dude on triple zeros. <laughs> like Thanks it. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> John's funny. Oh, uh, one thing I did want to mention that was very important. Someone asked about weight size yes. uh, that I wanted to reference. The important thing as far as knowing the size weight you use, you want to match what's on the rental rods. So a majority of people are going to be typically modeling their size weight after what a majority of people are using. On our 39-hour, that's a 6-ounce weight. 
the beautiful thing about Hubbard's Marina, in my opinion, I'm biased because I wrote I wrote all the copy on the website, but all, all the website has is endless information. Josh behind the computer here cut a lot of my information out. So you have to actually scroll down on most of our pages below the videos and click. You want to know more, click here, and it expands an even larger section. On the 39 hour, he didn't cut down my information because you need a lot of information on that trip. But on our five hour trips or 10 hour trips, you have to actually physically click here to learn more because I typed so much information. Uh, so as you can see, Josh is demonstrating behind you how, or behind us how much information is on those pages. And I, I actually cut out a lot myself. Uh, and we have a lot more in our fishing tips and tricks page that Josh just re-edited. Go slowly, Josh, so they can see where you're clicking. You go to fishing, fishing trips on our website. Scroll down to fishing video links. When you're hovering over fishing video links, you have a bunch of different options. But now you can just click fishing video links. Tips and tricks. No, no, no. We made a new page. What happened to the summary page? I don't know. Josh does a lot of stuff with the website. I don't understand. He has to explain it, 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 explain it to me slowly. The summary page, how did it get to that one? Uh, info. Oh, you got to click over here and trip info. And then click what? Just trip info? Right Just trip info? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So you, under the info tab, you click trip info, and it brings you to the kind of summary page of all our fishing tips and tricks, all our past live stream shows, and the fishing reports all on one page. Lots of information right there. Information overload, because under fishing trips, you can scroll down to fishing video links, and you can see the fishing tips and tricks, the, the Bass Pro Shop seminars, the live Q&A shows, but on the summary page, it's all one-stop shopping. So great page to bookmark and keep up to date with our latest videos. And uh, we are working towards getting you more videos. I'm, I'm flirting with the idea of hiring a full-time videographer. So that will be uh, really cool. That way Josh can focus on our websites. I can have another guy focused on our videos and video editing. So if you know someone who wants to work for absolutely nothing. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. We'll take you, you fishing. <laughs> We're going to take you fishing, but you got to produce, edit, and post a ton of video, uh, and we'll take you fishing Definitely for free. Definitely a full-time job. 100% looking for a full-time person. Videographer, hit me up. And with that, you got anything to add, John? Just uh, remember, when you're going on any of these trips, um, i, I got to say, and if you want to catch the fish of your dreams, you got to be fishing while others are dreaming. I've seen people catch fish everywhere on the boat, except in the bunk, and people always ask me, where's the best place to fish? And Dylan just told you, on the video. They're always biting on the video. <laughs> and anywhere you have water under your feet is a good fishing Absolutely. spot. The back of the boat is 100% in my opinion, the worst spot to fish. <laughs> more tangles. The, and the more reason ta people bite over the back, you're out of the weather. Yeah. You're in the shade in the summer, you're out of the rain, you're out of the wind. But, but you, you have to deal with the exhaust fumes and everybody else's smelly shit going on back there. <laughs> and you have to deal with just the crowds. And then if Will, you have 30 Will people and Jason on the boat, are right there. And occasionally the yeah. brown trout. You have, you have 30 people on the boat, there's 25 people in the back quarter Fish of the in boat. the last... I would 100% rather be up in the bow with a big hat on and a hooded, salt-strong performance gear shirt with long sleeves, hiding from the sun. Those East and Coast guys tore it up last year fishing the bow. Yeah. I, I, yeah, you got more room. You got fresh air. You're not dealing with John Martin. And they had, <laughs> I'm they had jackpot around. fish every darn trip. These guys come over yeah. from the Atlantic. Yeah, and you've, you've just got more flexibility to do a lot more things up in the bow, slow pitch jigging, flat lining. Don't try to knock a rig fish, flat line fish, slow pitch jig in the stern. You want to be all the way up on the bow or somewhere in the middle outside of red snapper season. During red snapper season, the only time you have an opportunity to really do those unique styles of fishing is if you're either in the back corners or in the very bow pulpits. That's it. 
Outside of that, during red snapper season, fish mono, fish the same size lead as the boat, and fish straight up and down for red snapper. You will produce more fish. Mm-hmm. And, and really, Dylan, one more quick thing to add, and I say this all the time, but I mean it very true, sincerely. If you see me on the boat, don't talk to me when I'm reeling a big fish in, but if you want to ask me any question, period, I will be happy to try to help you any way I can because I want to, I want to see people catch as many fish and as big a fish as they can, and I know everybody at Hubbard's feels that same way, yep. and that is why I have stuck with you guys from the very beginning. Yep, one of our longest-running regulars club members, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Camp Hawthorne. In the My house. regular club number is 49. <laughs> and our, I think currently our newest member is like 5,490 5, something. And John's 49. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah. Second lowest number, Larry Miller is sitting at 40. So John is up there. There was no regulars, regulars club when I started fishing with him. Yes. That's a whole other story. Though. Yes. Yes, we retired his number and resurrected it we'll behind Larry it Miller. After show. After show, John will release his frustrations <laughs> on that. <laughs> Brian, you have anything to add before we end? We have an end Keep your bait wet. Keep your bait wet. <laughs> Longest amount of fishing time wins the jackpot every time. Every time. 90% of the time, every time. Last last trip, Damien slept through the good stop. You never know when you're going to hit that one spot just right and the fish are chewing. And the only good. time you lay down is on a long run when everybody else is trying to jockey for the trolling spot. That's not going to really catch you nothing. In my opinion, I'd much rather be bottom fishing than trolling. You can catch some good stuff trolling, but I'd rather be bottom fishing. It's a bottom fishing trip. That's what we're out there to do. That's trolling is just a on. bonus we let you get away with, and we're more than happy to help. Yeah, I'm focused on the bottom fishing. But so, try, Brian I says we have it. an hour run. Pull off the trolling rods. You'll catch me in my bunk. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, let's wrap this show up. We'll see you next week. Same time, same bad channel for another great show. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it tonight on Instagram. Make sure you give us a follow on uh, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Facebook, make sure you give us a like. And uh, we'll see you all next week, same time, 8.30 p.m. every Sunday night right here on the Hubbard's Marina page. Let's see who won our 39-hour trip. And then if you're on Facebook, make sure you hop over to the subscribers' private group and join us for the after show. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of the more colorful stories and answer your questions privately on that supporters group. So let's see who won the 39-hour trip. late. Josh is slipping. John Quigney from Lexington. I assume Kentucky. Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Congratulations, John. Thanks for watching. Everybody else, we'll see you next week. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. Amen to that. We'll see you next week at 8.30 p.m. on our Hubbard's Marina Facebook YouTube, and now Instagram channel. And don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. We'll see you this week.